This is a message to, for, and about millennials. That took eight seconds, and I know I have your attention. I will not be able to fully entertain you or uh, address this uh, topic in its entirety in 30 seconds, so I know I'll lose 80% of you. But that's perfectly okay because it's the 20% of you who remain for the entirety of probably 10 to 12 minutes of this video who are still here with me because at 35 seconds the other 80% are already gone who will be called upon one day to lead your generation anyway. So it's for you who this message is most important. Guys, I'm doing this because of several reasons. Um, <clears throat> I have more millennials watching this uh, little series here, these morning rambles on our channel, than I realized. Uh, I made a comment in a video yesterday about their short attention span and uh, about how they wouldn't watch these long videos, and they called me to the mat on it. Um, we've heard, and very respectfully, uh, a lot of millennials chimed in on that video. One young man <clears throat> pointed out he was 31, 32 years old. Um, he reads. He watches long videos, he likes to have engaging conversations, and that it's his parents who can't set down their gadgetry, their iPhones, their computers uh, at dinner time. And uh, I told him, I said, be careful, young man, with those books and those long, informative videos and those meaningful, respectful conversations. You better be very careful indeed, because someday you might lead your generation. So... Here's what's going on. Another reason, and this is for a lot of non-millennials, this is for a lot of Generation Xers, uh, and baby boomers are finally going to see in more detail a certain point I've been trying to bring home here lately with some uh, messages I've been giving uh, after the, uh, the post office video has kind of been picking up some grassroot traction, a lot of viral activity. People have asked me to be a little bit more specific with what do I mean about how people just aren't going to be slaves to abusive employers anymore. What are they going to do? How's it going to happen? And I mentioned in that video yesterday, and this is where the uh, when I was talking about this, I was talking about the Great Awakening, about how our realignment of priorities are leading to this Great Awakening where people are just walking away from terrible jobs that make them miserable because they don't have to stay there anymore. Not just because there are more jobs available in the in the economy and there was a few years ago but but and this is something i haven't addressed and i'm going to address now but because the economy has changed so drastically over the last decade and millennials are the biggest generation who are going to benefit from this and this is why they will not remain in miserable jobs like generation xers baby boomers and world war ii folks now i'm going to read something to you here a lot of folks say in the comment sections that uh, they like the points in my videos, but they're too long and I need an editor. What I would say to those folks is, you've never read any of my books because they're too long and I really need an editor for those too. Um, I'm going to read part of the author's afterword of, from my novel, um, The Box. Here's, now, the, the book is no good. <clears throat> Don't buy it. You're wasting your money if you do. This is not promoting my book. But what I wanted to say to you today in this video, I've said before, but I said it by way of the written word. Uh, and I, I I did edit that, but I edited it myself. So it's probably still too long and I probably still need another editor. Um, but I, I, I'm specific about what I'm talking about here. And I'm not going to beat around the bush in these videos anymore. I'm going to read you the specifics of why... The millennials are not going to put up with abusive bosses and remain in miserable work environments like the preceding generations before them did. Um, now, this is just the second half of the author's afterword, and it's only a page long, so just bear with me. The first half is me talking about me and how I was basically homeless, down and out, drunk and drug addicted combat vet in the Philippines, but then I, you know, pursuing my passion, writing and all this stuff, and through the harnessing social media, was able to get out of that situation, turn my life around. I'm not going to go into detail here because I talked about that 17,584 times in the Neighbor with the Crayon video. So you can go watch that there. Now, and uh, to point out, and those of you who have been subscribing to this channel for a long time know, we are not about politics. We are not about religion. We are not about divisiveness. We're about unity. And no, I'm not being all softy, cushy. 
guys, the next decade in my prediction, okay, we the, the first part of this century, the first decade was about fear. Fear of that boogeyman who's going to hit us next. The next decade was about division. Oh, you don't think like me, then you're not with me. We can't be friends, even though we got 95% of things in common. The 5% we differ on keeps us from being able to be friends. The next decade in the United States from 2020 on, I really believe, is going to be defined by our desire to reunite despite political differences, religious differences, ethnic differences. We're just sick and tired of being divided by the powers that be. Why? Well, largely to keep us in jobs we hate that make us miserable because the friend of my enemy is my friend, that kind of thing. We're done with that, and millennials are leading the charge. So I point that out because I mentioned a politician uh, briefly here in the beginning, and that's because it's important to the point I'm trying to bring home. With no further ado, let me read to you. To the 20% of the millennials who started watching this who are still with us here at six minutes, thank you. Okay, from the author's afterword of The Box. Poorly written novel, not worth your time or money to read it, so don't. I'm not political, but I paid attention to the most recent 2016 presidential elections, as many people around the world did in record numbers. While the candidates were still in the primaries, I watched the debates, and like him or not, I promise I'm neutral, and that's how I wrote this, Marco Rubio, the young senator from Florida, continually made a statement that was spot on. He basically summed up how I'd been able to do what I'd done, go from practically homeless, <clears throat> down and out, disabled combat veteran to upper middle class American success every time he spoke during the debates. When the issue of minimum wage would come up this, uh, and Senator Rubio would vehemently stand opposed to increasing it, he would point out how the economy has changed more in the last five years than anyone can imagine. He would then go on to discuss such issues as social media and of how there were people who were unemployable only a few years before. People like me. Hold on, I'm reading this from my laptop and it just fell asleep. Okay, I woke it up. Yes, even my technology falls asleep when I start rambling, so don't feel bad. <clears throat> okay, he would then go on to discuss issues at, such issues as social media and of how there were people who were unemployable only a few years before, people like me, who were making more money than they'd ever dreamed they'd ever make, people like me, by harnessing social media. And, and just to step away from that, and I've shared with you, I've been sharing with you since I started this channel, how I did that with blogging and writing and all these things, okay? Went from, you know, nobody reading my stuff to self-publishing to winning international journalism awards on Yahoo, okay? Now, through a self-publishing platform they had on there for, for Yahoo, okay, and then working for all these blogs. Now, back to this. <clears throat> His point, sadly, fell on deaf ears. And I don't mean sadly because he didn't get enough votes to advance to the general election. Again, I promise I'm neutral. I mean sadly because, sadly, there are still far too many people out there working in what Rubio refers to as the old economy who are absolutely miserable but who are too scared to make the transition into what he refers to as the new economy and find happiness by pursuing their passions and harnessing social media to bring their goods and services to the world's largest open market, the Internet. Now, guys, mind you, <clears throat> I'm going to take a break from this to point this out. I wrote this a year before I went to work for the post office, the job I hated that made me miserable. I'd forgotten what I'd written myself, and then I remembered when I hit the point of misery with that job, and I went back to what I'd learned in that islands, harnessing social media, the new economy, to escape the misery of the old economy. And now here I sit before you on my wife's obsolete iPhone. Not, yeah, I got friends that are delivering mail right now. God bless them. I love them. And they're going to be out there for 12 or 14 hours a day. And they're going to, they hate that job. And I know because I was there with them. Some of them like it. A lot of them hate it. This is just an example of they're out. Okay. I'm going to continue with the reading now. At this juncture, and with all this in mind, I now want to make a brief point about millennials. The generation in which our two main characters in this work, Devin and Christina, belong. And guys, this story, the main characters, Devin and Christina, um, they're very opposites in kind of how they live their life. But they're both millennials, and they're, they got so much in common as far as they're passionate about music. Um, Devin is a gifted writer. Christina is a stockbroker. Both of them are really not into what it is 
society, their parents, their family uh, are pushing them into doing because they want to pursue their passion. But they're being come down on by their baby boomer parents, Gen X parents, um, being told, oh, you can't make a living doing that. You're just irres irresponsible. You're immature. You don't want to work. The exact same things I was told when I wanted to pursue my passion writing, they don't listen either. They go for it. And it's a long not very well written story but it does have a good ending now i'm going to continue millennials have been getting a bad rap they've been called apathetic encourageable and a number of other things that frankly i can remember my generation gen x being called when we were their age no doubt even the greatest generation in our nation's history the world war ii generation caught the same flack when they were coming of age from the generations ahead of them the comments people make about each up-and-coming generation, in my opinion, and after having lived long enough to see it, have more to do with the pecking order of generations within a society than they do actual facts. The facts are, the millennials have grown up on technology that even someone still in their 40s, like myself, couldn't imagine existing when we were in high school. They don't need to memorize the dates and causes of events because they... Because they have Google. Sure, general knowledge will always be respected and hold its rightful value, but the amount of time spent researching it and gathering multiple sources has been reduced from literally days at a time to mere seconds. Many of you remember having to go to the library and spend days in there doing research for a paper. These, these young people are Googling everything in minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Secondly, social media gives the millennials an opportunity that no other generation in the history of mankind has ever had and that is the opportunity to relentlessly pursue their passions without fear of financial consequences if they work long hard and smart success is theirs to be had and the financial rewards will follow in case you're not up to speed on social media and generating revenues from it let me point out that the numbers used in this story for Devin and Christina and their YouTube channel are not far-fetched their music, okay, the, the main couple, they go viral on YouTube, and this allows them to quit the jobs they hate that make them miserable um, and pursue their passions and do what they love and not have to worry about money. And guys, this is kind of eerie, creepy, because I wrote the plan on how this is done. Like, here's the roadmap. The book failed. I went back into the old economy, got a job that I hated that made me miserable, and said, you know what, the book failed, but I know the plan, the roadmap works because I did it before on a different social media platform. Let's pursue this plan again using the same roadmap and, look and see what happens, and voila, here I am, it works, okay? Now, back to this. There are musicians, writers like me, actors and actresses and even video gamers, yes video gamers making tens of thousands of dollars a month on social media doing what they love. Go to YouTube and see who's being featured this week. Get on Facebook, which we know I call fake book. Get on Facebook and put an interest in the search engine, be it gardening, camping, or spaghetti western movies. Homesteading maybe? Hmm. And check out how many pages with hundreds of thousands of fans exist for that interest. Go to one of those pages. You'll find some interesting articles. Click on one of them and read it. Oh, and by, and by checking on that article, you just made some money for the blogger who wrote it. Now, I don't blog anymore, but I used to, and that's how I made money. And, and guys, I mean, here's the trade secret. People ask me to be more specific on how this is done. It doesn't get any more specific than this. These are the trade secrets. This is the roadmap. I'll continue reading. There was a show on television several years ago called Dirty Jobs. The show's host, Mike Rowe, had a mantra that basically stated, young people these days are borrowing money they'll never afford to be able to pay back to get college degrees for jobs that no longer exist or that won't exist soon. Based on my own experiences, I couldn't agree with him more. I'll never discount education. <clears throat> I got a bachelor's degree, and I'm glad that I did. More for the experience of college life than the piece of paper I got that said I graduated. But I'll be the first to tell you my degree has nothing to do with what I'm doing now, and social media and technology, in my humble opinion, has made the need for a college degree completely obsolete in most cases as far as careers and income earnings potentials go. Now, I'm going to step out of the reading for a minute and point out I will never discount the value of an education however I also want to point out what Mark Twain always said don't let your education get in the way of your learning now 
I, I, I have a Board of Regents degree, which means I have a bachelor's with no specific major identified. I went to college for an education, not a job. And I've spent my adult life after college working in jobs of which my college degree had nothing to do with. Okay. With this said, I now make a statement not about, but to the millennials. That being, follow your heart. Do what you love. Pursue your passion. If you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. You've got the opportunity that no one, like I said before, in the history of mankind has ever had. <clears throat> Don't listen to the rest of society who's putting you down because what lies behind most of those insults is jealousy, plain and simple. They're jealous of your youth and the fact that you have the opportunities ahead of you that most of them missed and mostly because they simply didn't attempt them. We all talk about our ships coming in. Most people never even go down to the docks to look and see if it's on its way in. Okay, when they look back on all their should-haves, could-haves, wish-we-would-haves, they see you, the millennials, glaring right back at them. Staying in school and getting good grades and landing that perfect job is a recipe for misery. Do what you love, the money will follow. You might not end up rich, but how many people actually do anyway? And is that really the end goal in life? I'm not... I'm, I'm confident you'll earn enough money to keep a roof over your head and food in your belly if you pursue your passions to thine own self be true. And always remember, everyone can hear the music, but it's those who live outside the box who create it. The box of the old economy is gone. The new economy is here. The millennials are the first major generation of the United States and in world history to grow up with no box around them. They're choosing happiness over misery. They will not keep those jobs where they are mistreated and abused because they can do what they love, do it in front of a camera. Many of them have been doing it since they were in high school, and as a result, in their early 20s, they have millions of followers. You think they're going to go out there and chuck mail in the rain in the snow 12 hours a day with some supervisor shoving food in their mouth at the all-you-can-eat Western Wood Grill buffet, asking them why they're an hour and a half behind on their route? Nope, not going to do it. So if you're a millennial and you stayed with me for this long, take this message to heart. You have an opportunity none of us before you had. Don't squander it. Be happy. Remember, there's nothing ignorant about living a life of bliss. And with that said, I'll give you a parting shot of the homestead, and I hope each and every one of you have a great day.